So good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for, for hosting me and being willing to listen to me. Um, as Ellie so um, nicely introduced me, I'm Terence Scott from the Global Alliance from Rabies Control, and I'll be talking to you about surveillance. So I think a lot of people already this morning and yesterday and throughout the course of this, this fantastic workshop have mentioned surveillance and mentioned how important it is, and I think I've been led in by some fantastic presentations from both uh, Louis Null and um, Eric Brum also, just mentioning the importance of looking at surveillance, the importance of data, and getting that data and making an impact. So I'm going to start off with a bit of a, a different uh, route, just to link um, why I think a lot of you people are here. So specifically from my side, I'm very much focused on, on rabies. Um, it's in the name. But I know a lot of you guys are more focused on dog population management, animal welfare. And I think we need to make that clear link between animal welfare and rabies control. So starting off, what do most people think of when they think of rabies? Well, you get pictures like this. If you do an internet search, you get movies about rabies. Um, it's all about fear, about anger, about viciousness. And what's the common theme throughout all of these pictures is dogs. And you can see in the, the, some of the pictures there how people are reacting to these animals. It's scary. You're being attacked by this vicious animal, and you need to defend yourself. So most people there are clubbing the dogs. They're using spears to attack the dogs and, and protect themselves. And that's understandable. So what does rabies create um, an impression of for the dogs? It's a very negative impression. So rabies actually creates this horrible pr uh, impression on the perception of dogs. So communities then, understandably, react negatively. You have these vicious animals in the community. They're biting your children. They're attacking you. They're causing disease. And they demand justice. And we hear about this day in and day out. We heard about it earlier this meeting. We've heard about it. Almost every week, there's some sort of story about people demanding justice, demanding intervention. And usually, what is that intervention? People go out and cull animals. And often, this is because you know, the mayor will demand that we need an immediate reaction, we need an immediate solution. Go out, cull the animals. The community is then happy. Something's been done. There are fewer dogs um, for the moment. And the, the problem then is led to rise again. Because we know that this does not solve the problem. We know that culling is not the solution. But it's a good quick fix. When the communities demand this information and demand this justice for these animals attacking their children, the mayor goes out, he culls the animals, and the community is then happy for a, few, for a few days, for a few months, and then the problem persists again. So what do we need to do? Well, we heard from Andre all about education and awareness. And we know that awareness is based on good education. And with that good education and a good awareness, it re uh, results in community pressure. But this is positive community pressure, not demanding that we go kill all the dogs, because through the education, we then understand that this is not effective. And with this community pressure, you have effective interventions. And this is where this group then comes in, effective in interventions through vaccination, through dog population management. But awareness needs empirical data. And I think, again, Eric um, alluded to this, saying that we need this data to support what we are saying, to support um, what we are doing. So not only that we're vaccinating, and yes, we think we're covering 70% of the population, how can we tell if this is actually effective? How can we tell if what we're doing is, is worthwhile? And that's where this system then comes in. So we've developed the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, which is a dedicated One Health rabies surveillance system. So based on collecting, collating, and analyzing this data to make the information usable, usable for awareness, for education, and to, cr uh, to raise that awareness and political will so that we can have these effective interventions. And the system is based on the DHIS2 system, which is used in 
um, more than 40 different countries globally. And it is based on surveillance at all levels. So not only the international level for reporting purposes, not only at the national level for general um, aggregated data information, but also at the local level where you can get point-to-point -point vaccination data and information about what you're doing and its effects. So the bulletin itself is a comprehensive rabies surveillance system and it's integrated intersectoral data sharing. So we've again heard from some of the pre previous pre presentations about the importance of sharing this data, ensuring that NGOs, that government bodies, that different ministries within governments, that different stakeholders all bring their data together into one system so that it can be used together. Because we've seen from many different countries around the world that there are potentially hundreds of NGOs working in the same country. They actually, a lot of their work is overlapping because they're not sharing that information, they're not sharing that data. And this is a system that facilitates that. And it's based on international indicators. So it's, not, it's looking for the correct type of data that we know is effective and we know that is useful for you. So is it sustainable? We heard from that fantastic presentation yesterday from Kathmandu in Nepal about the importance of sustainability, about um, the award winners in, in Colombia, about how we need the government to take over these initiatives because NGOs just simply cannot handle this load. So is this system sustainable? Well, yes. It's been used in more than 46 African countries at the moment. And as uh, Louis Nell mentioned this morning, more than 70% of those countries are using it on a routine basis. The remainder are using it on an annual basis. We launched it in Asia and Middle East also, so it is expanding to the other countries in the world. And this is all based on open source software that is compatible with various other different types of software. So if you're using other programs and softwares, this system is compatible with many of those different softwares. So the system has been developed with various different components ranging from laboratory diagnosis to um, patient tracking within clinics to intersectoral data sharing to bite case management and integrated bite case management that was mentioned this morning and also then rabies vaccination tracking. So for the purpose of, of this meeting, I think it would be most pertinent to focus on the rabies vaccination tracking component. But we do have other information later. You're welcome to come speak to me later about any of the other components that you may be interested in, if you are interested in using the system. So the rabies vaccination tracker component, um, it tracks individual tracking of every single vaccinated animal. And it's collected and mapped automatically to create these maps and updates as the information comes in. So it allows for real-time campaign monitoring. Um, it's launched in 2018 and it's already being used in seven different African countries for their national rabies control programs. So this system is available on either an app, uh, on a computer, or also it's compatible with the GARP data logger, which I'll chat about a little bit later. So you can see some of the outputs from this. These are static point vaccination campaigns in Ethiopia that are tracked using this system. And you can see that it aggregates the numbers um, within each of the different, in this case, Wareda, but areas or zones. Um, and you can see the number of animals vaccinated within those areas. We can also see um, distribution maps or percentile maps, looking at the percentage coverage over different areas. And this is again where the discussions about the dog population density and um, your dog population estimates come important. So you can look at that vaccination coverage and show that you are reaching the adequate coverage to then control and eliminate the disease in those areas. You can have outputs based on your subsidy in this case for Ethiopia, but um, your different provinces, districts, regions, areas, whatever the case is. And also you can track the number of vaccinations over time. And all these graphs and maps and things are updated automatically. You don't need experts um, who are experts in GIS and stats and, and, and uh, data analysis to do this. The system does it all for you. So touching back onto the GARC data logger, so I mentioned that the rabies vaccination tracker component is both compatible with a mobile app 
and also through a computer, but also through the GOG data logger. So the GOG data logger is a custom developed handheld portable device that we've developed specifically for this purpose. So we've found that there are many different challenges using mobile phones in the field. Um, some people enjoy using them and like it, and that's perfectly fine. Other people we found that they have issues with using mobile phones in the field, and that is why we developed this device. So you can see that there's no screen on the device, which means it's very durable, it doesn't break in the field, and it's really easy to use. And from our experience with our own app that we've developed that is an exact replica of this, um, this is still much faster than using an app. You can collect data in literally three to five seconds. And the idea is, if you see this top left photo, the vaccinator themselves are doing the data collection. So there's a gentleman vaccinating an animal. You can see hanging around his neck is the device. He will then vaccinate that animal, stand up, record the data, and move on. So you don't need a dedicated data collector. We know that majority of vaccination costs are not to do with the vaccine, as Guillaume mentioned yesterday. It's to do with your staff costs, your transport. So if we can reduce the staff costs by making the vaccinator the data collector also, then we can reduce the cost per dog vaccinated. So I mentioned that this is uh, a device specifically for tracking rabies vaccination campaigns, but it's also a multifunctional and versatile device. These buttons can be customized to mean absolutely anything. So you can use it for animal census, for post-vaccination surveys, for spay and neuter tracking. We heard about the street surveys in the first, on the first day during the workshops. This is an ideal device to, to use for that. And you can even use it for other animals, livestock, wildlife, whatever you're interested in, because you can customize these buttons to absolutely anything. And obviously, any other things that you can think of. So just in summary, we've seen that rabies is directly associated with a fear and mistreatment of dogs. We know that, and this results in um, community outcry and ineffective re um, uh, responsive action, such as culling. And we know that data is essential to build awareness uh, for effective interventions rather than uh, doing reactive knee-jerk reactions. And the REB system, the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, is an all-inclusive data system, one health platform that does assist in generating this data, in collating it, and making it in a usable format. And we know that good data saves animal and human lives. Without good data, we can't make statements such as this. These are all directly related to rabies, but we can't make a statement saying one person dies every nine minutes from rabies. How do we know that? Well, we know it because of the data that we've collected, we've analyzed, and we've used to make that statement. So instead of saying there are X number of rabies deaths in your country, we can have much more impactful statements that we can then use to advocate for rabies control for DPM. And similarly, you can't walk up to a mayor and say, culling is ineffective. Why? I get rid of the dogs, no dogs, no bites, no rabies, perfect. We need the data to show that. So this platform then assists with this data collection. So I'm going to finish off with that. Please, if anyone's interested in the system, wants more information about any of these things that I've spoken about, please come speak to me or, or um, my other colleagues in our team. Uh, we're happy to share this information with you. It's all free and available online. Thank you very much.